Whether you are full on board the Persona 3 and Persona 4 for life train, or waiting patiently for this era to end with eyes set on Persona 5, Persona Q should not be ignored by the Persona fan. While this Atlas title isn't a fighting or dancing game like other Persona or future Persona titles, it returns to RPG elements. With that said though, this game plays and feels much more like an Etrian Odyssey game than previous games in the Persona franchise. To call Persona Q an Etrian Odyssey game reskinned with Persona characters is completely inaccurate though. This game is more of a unique offspring of the two. In the simplest and most non-spoiler plot analysis, Persona Q is about the seas of Persona 3 and the investigation team of Persona 4 meeting up at Yasugami High while they are all still in high school to stop a new issue involving shadows that is 100% canon. If that description sends several red flags to your brain, you're going to have to play through the story to piece it all together for yourself. What this does set up is the quintessential opportunity to mix your favorite P3 and P4 characters together, see them interact with one another, and live out those novels of fanfiction you lie about not writing. At the start of the game, you choose either the P3 or P4 characters. This decision includes which of the two game's heroes you want to make as your main character. The emo superstar or the swag master. Early on, you'll meet up with Zen and Rei, who are the new characters of this game, before running into the other characters from the game you didn't select from the start. From this point, you will make five-man teams with whoever you like from this crossover. Depending on who you do use in your party, there are opportunities for these characters to have back and forth with each other during combat, which is nice flavor. The group believes that if they can return Zen and Rei's memories, the situation can be solved. While certain scenarios and cutscenes are definitely amusing and fun to watch unfold in PQ, certain characters have been completely flanderized, which disappointed me to see. As someone who obsessively played P3 and P4, you get a feel for the depths of these characters. When they are reduced to a single traitor gag, it severely reduces their quality. An example of this would be P4's Chie. The amount of time she spends talking about meat is obnoxious. There is far more extent to her character than just this. It's so bad to the point where she hopes filet mignon is in every treasure chest, and table shadows should have meat eaten off them. I'll avoid other spoilers, but Chie is not the only character that suffers from this. Dare I say protein? If you're a die-hard Persona fan, but have never played an Etrian Odyssey game, the gameplay is going to take some getting used to. On the opposite end of that statement, if you love both series, you may just have found the perfect game. The Etrian influence has five-man parties instead of three, a front and back row, foes, roguelike movements, workbench, nurse establishments, map making and dungeons, and much, much more. Now, take these elements and add in Persona themes like, you know, Personas, Enemy Weaknesses, The Compendium, Enemy Models, Spell Names, Humor, and of course the characters you are used to and you really got something here. To fuse these two franchises together though, some compromises had to be made. While this may have come off as negative, it wasn't at all. These are the features that really stand out as unique. Without taking the one-way trip into Spoiler Town, every character in this game is a wild card. This trait is no longer unique to the main characters. This is where the individual strategy comes from. In Persona games, the Persona is where your stats lie. In PQ, you only get HP, SP, and Spell's abilities from Personas. No stats. This allows for more versatility and ultimately allows you to put your favorite characters in your party instead of a more forced strategy roster. It's also worth mentioning that you have full control of your characters in your party. Pro tip, take Naoto. Hama and Muda will make the first two dungeons much easier on you. The dungeon crawl gameplay is fully Etrian style. By this, I mean you enter the dungeon, explore as much as you can, grind XP as much as you can, before being forced to return to hit up the nurse for HP and SP regeneration. Income is all based on the items you return to in the workshops, no gold drops from monsters. And this is also where you forge new weapons, armors, accessories, and items. The gameplay is very crawl, return, crawl, return. While grinding is very possible, if you don't regularly run, you should be fine on normal difficulty. The first dungeon felt the most difficult due to not having the complete roster. Some floors had to be done pre-sub-personas, and your characters rely more on their base persona, which cuts off versatility. The game seemed to dip in difficulty after the first dungeon was completed. This could have also been due to my understanding of the gameplay more. PQ has different difficult levels depending on how much challenge you want out of the game. 
The art style is both extremely Persona and completely foreign to Persona. At first glance, you'll notice the chibiish characters. I didn't know what to make of this at first, but it grew on me as I continued playing. And at the end, I decided it fit the game perfectly. The dungeon design is beautifully creepy and perfectly true to the Persona franchise. Each dungeon follows a specific theme that is done constantly well. These dungeons stand out immensely from each other, which is delightful. The enemy models and Persona designs are very reminiscent of those found earlier in the franchise and don't take on the chibi style. Persona Q's music is absolutely fantastic. I can't fathom a single negative thing to say about the music in this game. There is a perfect blend of brand new tracks and familiar tracks. The Persona 3 and Persona 4 fans will be happy by the music selection. Depending on which hero you choose in the beginning also depends some of your soundtrack. Yumi Kawamura does the Persona 3 tracks, Shihoko Harada does the Persona 4 tracks, and Lotos Juice is found throughout. The battle theme, Light the Fire Up in the Night, has two different versions depending on the hero. The P3 version has more guitar with Yumi, while the Persona 4 version has more horns with Shihoko. Personally, I absolutely love this level of detail in making your hero choice making PQ feel more like his game. If you haven't heard the Maze of Life track, I forgive you to leave this review and listen to it real fast. It's amazing. And yes, Shoji Minuro composed the songs. If you're a Persona and Etrian Odyssey game fan, I can't imagine a more perfect game for you ever made. If you're a Persona fan but have never touched the Etrian titles, you'll be happy as long as you're willing to learn a new combat system and dungeon exploration. Despite some powerful flanderization of characters, the interactions between the P3 and P4 characters are delightful, witty, entertaining, and most importantly, fun. Persona Q is fan pandering at its finest. For those who wanted more interactions than the Persona 4 Arena games offered, this game is a carousel that takes you round and round. This has been Andrew for GameZone.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>